Okay, so today's inquiry is building on what we said on day one in Master One when we talked about reaction and creation. And remember, with the game of having the letters all mixed up and then rearranging the letters of a word. So reaction is that what we automatically find ourselves being and our reactions of the emotions that run us, the thoughts that run us. And when you take the C in reaction and you make it prime, you put it first. So C first, C as for consciousness, for completion, for creation. So C first and then automatically reaction becomes creation. So that instant twist, that instant possibility on transforming reaction into creation, that's what this is all about, what we are going into now. So that you see that you A, have the potential, the ability to do that literally in every situation in your life, no matter what the circumstances are, that you instantly can shift from reaction to creation. Now how would that be for a possibility if that competence would be with you? You are aware of a reaction running you, so the reaction is having you instead of, the, instead of you having the reaction. And in that moment you do something, and I promise you, within five seconds, Maximum. You have shifted from victim to creator, from reaction to creation. Irrespective of what you feel, irrespective of what you think, irrespective of what the environment is. I'm not promising anything I cannot be held accountable for as I will show you in the next 30, 45 minutes. Now how would that be for a possibility to walk away with that tool from today? Awesome. Into the rest of your life. I want to share with you the foundation for that is being willing to take responsibility. And although we have the full inquiry and full depth about all levels of responsibility in Master 3, I want to share with you the foundation for responsibility with the quote here on page 69 in your workbook. I read it to you. And it starts with responsible, response able, to be able to respond, not to react. So respond here is a higher level, that means a level of creation, not reaction. The difference between reacting and responding. So being able to respond, responsibility. The true meaning of responsibility is response able or the ability to respond. What we may think say, do, or feel. These are our responses for which we and no one else are responsible. This is easy to see but hard to live, for we have been taught to believe and think the opposite. So we don't consciously choose our response, which would be creation. We react instead, and then we blame others for our reaction. Because you made me angry. Because what you did is inevitably causing frustration, et cetera, et cetera. No wonder we feel imprisoned by others and our circumstances. The enlightened, on the other hand, have broken the spell. They see the illusion. They take full responsibility for their response abilities. And as a consequence, they always hold their own destiny in their own hands. They are free spirits. So was thought for the food.org to UK. So the ability to shift instantly from any negative condition into positive action anywhere, anytime. And here you do have that wonderful graph. Now that is also available as a screensaver on the website for free. It's quite fun, it builds exactly as I will explain it to you and then it disappears and then it starts building again. 
So if you have that as a screensaver while you're doing your phone calls, you say that subconsciously, you get the imprint of the possibility stronger and stronger and stronger in your mind, which is very helpful. So let's start with the gray middle section here. Anything what we are creating starting out as an idea, thought, or feeling, what we then process, and in the processing it may become a wish, a will, or a desire to create. And then we're processing it whether we want to take now responsibility for creating it. If yes, then it becomes a decision. And now it's a matter of whether you are willing to take responsibility for that you have decided. See, people make decisions, but they do not take responsibility for that decision to manifest, so to act on the decision, in other words, being your word. So, one way or the other, you are in every day living in the world, being a creative human being, you are coming to this point here. Now from there, it's either downhill or uphill. And I will first explain to you the downfall. So the downfall would mean that on this stage, we are not willing to take responsibility or not full responsibility. For the creation, we desire and even maybe having made a decision on. So that means you want to create a better position in your company. So you feel that it's time for you being promoted. And here, on that level then, if you do not take responsibility for making that happen, igniting the possibility for the promotion actively from your side, what's happening is you're suddenly moving one rung lower into expectation. So you are now expecting that your boss has done a course on clairvoyance and is reading your thoughts and is suddenly recognizing, oh my God, this potential that needs to be promoted. So he comes to you with an excuse not having seen your genius earlier and then invites you to accept the promotion. Now I'm exaggerating here a little bit to get the point across. Because that's what people actually expect. Because they complain that their potential and genius doesn't get recognized in the company. And they find always good reasons because of mobbing, because the boss or the superior who is ahead of you doesn't want to move his ass from the chair so that you could move up, blah, 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 etc., etc. All the good reasons why. Fact is, that what you have been experiencing is going into expectation. So anything in life that you desire, what you are waiting for, and I'm not talking about the creative act of female powers expressed as in letting happen. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the victim that waits for the outside, the others, to come to you rather than you getting off your arrogance and vanity and going to them. I'm talking about that. Because there is definitely a making happen and a letting happen. The letting happen could look like waiting, but it isn't. You get the difference. Yeah? So here it's expecting that the, that the whole shall deliver. And then also, could happen when you are going into assumptions. Now assumptions, if you do not act on them and convert them into questions and act on asking that question, that assumption becomes an expectation and the two are brother and sister. Okay, so what happens if you are not taking responsibility while you are here? Just take it into your life. I say that inevitably you are falling down one more rung on the ladder of power, 
downwards. Inevitably, that means you do not even have to do anything. The circumstances don't even need to change. You just need to hang out here long enough and an expectation converts itself into a complaint. Take a look at the last time you expected something and it didn't get delivered. Didn't you find yourself at one stage, suddenly are you, you're starting to complain? Who can relate to that? Yeah. Now, that's an automatism. And guess what? When you are not taking responsibility while you are in complaint, what happens is that again, inevitably, without you needing to do anything, without any change in the circumstances, you fall down in another rung. You then are suddenly finding yourself in frustration and aggression, or aggression. So the complaint now becomes chronic and that results in a frustration. A frustration is then having consequences because from a frustration you are radiating usually an energy of separation because you are starting to withhold what you have to contribute because when you're frustrated you're not in the enthusiasm to contribute 100% to wherever you are. So you're withholding because you're frustrated, like in your relationship, and that's a separation. And guess what? From there, you gather more frustration. And then it's a snowball rolling down the mountain. Or you're more that aggression type. That means you don't get what you expect, what you want. And then you're going to complain. And if that doesn't make a difference, then you suddenly become aggressive. That can show up in all various forms can show up that your responses become rude, that can show up as bitchiness in the relationship, that can show us up in a withhold of tenderness, so aggression, or flat out aggression, you bark back, some little <clears throat> and whoosh, you are already in an explosive state, I can see some of your faces is smiling in recognition. That means you know what I'm talking about. Guess what? When you are not shifting latest here into responsibility, then you fall down another rank on the ladder of power. And that is resignation. Ultimately, every resignation started out as an expectation. Take a look. Every resignation, I say, started out as an expectation that you did not communicate or you did not take responsibility for manifesting. He should bring me flowers once a week after the honeymoon. Otherwise, it only shows that he doesn't care as much as in the beginning anymore, and that means love's over. That is an assumption. That is an expectation. Then if he actually does not, then bring the flowers. Then you go into complain, and what you get here as a prophet is you get to be right. That it's not the same anymore. That he doesn't love you, or he is not excited anymore. And that makes you frustrated and you go maybe also in aggression, depends what type you are, and ultimately you're going to resignation, you give up. You accept it. And then you try to manage to live with it, which is a very sad and sometimes also pathetic situation, condition. So the first thing I ask you to look at is realizing that the downfall is sequential and inevitable. Just that step, we talk in a moment about the upper rungs of course. 
So can you see, if you do not act, that snowball keeps rolling down the mountain. And whatever you are now sitting on as an expectation in your life will become a complaint. If you start seeing that, then you got fire under your belt. And then you may act on converting, as I will show you, the expectation into positive action, not to let it become a complaint. Because you know all your complaints, if you don't act on them now, become frustrations or aggression. And if there's already frustration or aggression, and you don't act on it, you will harvest resignation. And that's like you burying a good part of yourself. And the good news is that wherever you are on those ranks, whatever time it is, no matter how you feel and what you think and what you do, you can in an instant, I said five seconds, to transform yourself from this run, for example, into the space of creation. So, directly from frustration, you don't need sequentially to move up, to go into complaint and expectation, no. Directly from here, you can jump here. From the resignation, you can jump here. From complaint, you can jump here. And how that is done, I will show you in a minute, when we are complete with regard to being aware of what's down here. So down here, we are in the state of being on it. Up here, we are off it. Down here, we are causing inevitably stop votes. So votes is in actions that hinder the flow of the whole. Whether we like it or not, simply our condition of being somewhere here is already a stop vote without us doing anything because it's causing separation and up here, you've got the yes vote. That means actions and being that contributes and accelerates actually the flow of the whole. So you got that graph, of course, also in your workbook that you surely have found by now. And just take a look one more time if you are getting everything what has been said so far. So expectations and assumptions could include to receive acknowledgement, the assumption that things getting done, the assumption that the other one is keeping the word, the assumption that the other one is caring for the integrity, the assumption that the other one or the company or your team is prepared, the assumption that they're not going to be sick, that the assumption that they're going to be on time, yeah, that whole set of assumptions and expectations. And complaints, that should be an easy one for everybody. It's too much work, it's too hard, they are unreliable, I'm underpaid, they don't look after me, he should put the toilet seat down. <laughs> she should dress up Saturday Eve It's her turn now to initiate, or vice versa. I should get paid more. God should help me. Life's not fair. My children don't listen. The government sucks. Which is actually true, but it could be a complaint. <laughs> so, the complaint list is long. Absolutely. You can have that expectation by particular standards in our society and so on and so forth. And if you unpack the product and it's not that what has been written on the content or what the salesperson told you or what's written in the, in the brochure, well, then 
you immediately are going, what people usually do, into taking action on it. They phone the company and say, listen, uh, and, and so on and so forth. You know? Even if, if you wouldn't act on it, then you would go down the ladder. So frustrations, as I already said, withholding is a consequence of being frustrated, making wrong, mobbing, gossiping is vengeance coming from frustration. No person, no employee who is not frustrated would do that. Only employees who are frustrated are going to cause that kind of office climate and you are as guilty as them if you are buying in and allowing that gossip to prevail and you not gonna take action on creating awareness about what's going on right now here and that making wrong certainly is not the right way. If those people who are spreading gossip would be aware of the ladder of power, then they would not need gossip as a behind the back kind of action. They would then have an opportunity to go directly to the person or the boss and act on the ladder of power on the upper rungs in creation. End of gossip. Being sick is also a consequence that might come from a underlying frustration. And aggression means using force, sabotaging, attracting mistakes, having bad luck suddenly coming in. Could be powered by a unconscious state of aggression. Revenge, vengeance, as I mentioned, and resignation is then, I've tried everything. So you made your suggestions in the company for improvement and the company didn't act on it. You followed up on it, company didn't act on it. Maybe they even laughed at you because they didn't understand what you were meaning. And you say, okay, fuck it. Yeah. That would mean that you have given up on that. There is a possibility to consciously make a choice with regard to discontinuing a project, but I come to that in a moment. This would be from reaction, just saying, okay, I had it. Or why should I care? Or what can we do? Just want to go home. Resignation, you know, in whatever way it plays, it plays out. Okay, so we covered now that part. And it's interesting, before I move now and explain the other part, just to do a check. What percentage of the totality of your life, inside life, or your psychology if you want to, approximately, what percentage of the totality belongs to the lower part of the ladder of power at the moment? So all your expectations, assumptions, complaints, frustrations, aggressions, resignations, that hold together in comparison to everything else. So what percentage actually is it? And then people, oh my God, 40%, 50%, 60%. have 60% or more. That's our state of operation. As I said, good news, you can jump within five seconds from any place down here to up here. So what is that up here? Up here means simply that after having taken responsibility for causing a difference, ending that situation, that you have now the opportunity to choose a conversion action, to choose a creation action. And the mildest form of creation action in this diagram here is expressing a wish. So instead of sitting on your expectation and waiting for the romantic dinner coming up, 
and the next evening is a TV evening and there are no candles and it's then growing more and more and more into frustration and so on and so forth. Why not expressing the wish Exactly, because if he would still love you, then you wouldn't need to mention it, right? That's then again an assumption you have. So you need to get off, off it big time on this game. Now all your stuff, you need to be willing to drop it, as in stop it, and go up here. Expressing a wish means simply hubby. I express the wish that tonight, or latest tomorrow night, and you make the choice now, please, we're going to have a romantic dinner. Candlelights, Rachmaninoff, music, you know, the whole nine yards. If you have forgotten, I give you a list. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow night, then, if your hubby is receptive, you're going to have the whole nine yards. What if he has forgotten that your greatest magic was experienced while the second piano concerto of Rachmaninoff was played. Maybe he doesn't remember. So now tomorrow you got the candle lights and everything and that music, it's Mozart. <laughs> it's just an example. Yeah. So then, you know how much music plays a role? Just imagine, everything is perfect, but you get a music that is really not your cup of tea, then the whole thing doesn't work. <laughs> so you give him the whole list. Then you make sure tomorrow night it's gonna be a good night. Tonight's gonna be a <laughs> But you need to know the ingredients. You don't wanna bake a cake. You gotta put in the right ingredients. One missing could mess up the whole thing. But too much of, some, of salt, the whole lemon cake is not tasty anymore. So, expressing a wish, we come back to that. I'm just explaining you the flow now here. So if your hubby is not reacting on expressing the wish, so he heard you, he may even have said yes, and tomorrow night it's nothing happening, then you easily now could fall down like, really going into complaint and aggression, right? Would be the easiest thing in the world. Your whole identity is like waiting for you to give up responsibility so that this game can start again. And all your being rights and men in general, that all is now just on standby. But maybe you are holding the power of consciousness and awareness up, saying, no, I'm not gonna go there. Expressing a wish didn't work. Now you move up the ladder of power. Request. A request is, I request that you create for us tomorrow night a romantic dinner and here's the list. <laughs> so the request now is you with your energy of the request, you are now going into the energy of the other. Wish is like sending a postcard, like, hey, just for you to be informed, I have a wish. But I request is now me entering your personal area. Because to a request, you need to respond now. Do you feel that there's a difference? Significant, because looking good and all kind of psychological factors let people get stuck sometimes on expressing a wish and they hesitate to make it a request and then they wonder why the result doesn't show up. Yes, a request is now risky because that is now actually going into the other person's energy. And when that doesn't work, the next one would be a demand. Now I demand tomorrow night you are creating for us a romantic dinner and here's the list. So that would be a demand. Now, of course, realistically, a demand is not that what is often used. A demand, for example, is used between parents and children 
up to a certain age. I demand that you are on time, that you come home tonight by six o'clock, or that you're looking left and right before you cross the street, so it's appropriate. Or in particular high performance teams, when we go into difficult sections in the mountain and you're the guide, you're not gonna go by please expressing a wish, you know, that I put my foot here. You say, no, fuck it, you put your foot here now. It's a command, because I'm responsible for your life. Or in the army, or contexts like that. So there are contexts in which demand is perfectly appropriate, and it's not the everyday life mode. And not to speak of command, which is pretty much on the same level here, it's just absolutely no objections. This is it, I command. And that's rare that this gets executed up here. So that is the upper rung. And that means from any red lower rung with one action, you could catapult the situation you're in and yourself into the upper letter of power area. And that means from reaction to creation, from victim to actor to victor. And now I ask you, give me examples where you think that it's not possible. Where you think the conversion that you make a quantum leap from red to blue is not possible. So I challenge you now to come up with stuff where this is not applicable, where this can't be done. Andrea. It's not really, it's a question, or I wonder about if I'm on some level on the downward ladder. Then it had already an effect on the people around me. Yes. By changing, and I see that everything is connected, and my attitude will project in the behavior of others. But they still wonder, like, how I can reverse the damage I caused in my relationship to other people yes. that might not just pop in five seconds. Absolutely, Andrea. Thank you for bringing it up. That expressing a wish, a request, a demand, is not that this is the only action that now completes the consequences you have caused by having been three months in expectation or complaint. It immediately shifts the energy though. Now, now you're going into creation, and now you may find, oh my God, I need now to clean up a lot of stuff. And then you are doing the completion con um, conversations with the people, saying, please forgive me for having done I won't do it in the future, and is there anything I can do in order to make up for possible damage cost, and so on and so forth. So you clean up until everything is complete. Yes, I do agree. It's just about the ignition, you stopping to be a victim. That jump. Give me situations, if you can see something or think about it, where this would not be possible. Under, I say it's possible under any circumstances, at every place, at any time. Yes? What if you have a colleague who um, doesn't participate the way they should, but it's not my place to tell them that they're not working properly? Yeah. So, that they keep sending that they not working properly is already a judgment which might be accurate but it feels like you're already coming from somewhere on the lower ranks that they should an assumption maybe you're already at in complaint so if i would ask you now to get off it and convert your reaction into creation and using one of the blue conversion actions, creation actions, how could that look like, just hypothetically, in that example? Uh, I could ask them to participate. For example, you request, I request you participate. Only I wouldn't feel it was my place. Doesn't matter. It's your complaint. Yeah. So you're in the game. Can you see it? We don't know what happens after you request. 
whether they accept, not, whatever. We don't know. However, you would stop being a victim. You would go into creation. And if they don't listen to you, then you go to the superior and request from the superior that he holds that person accountable for, to, for playing in the team. Oh yeah, now you suddenly need to risk yourself. But you are now showing up as somebody who is not accepting the shit that is going on in, this, in the department or the company. Now you are becoming a source of truth, a source of change, a source of creation. You will cause trouble, believe me. They shoot people like that. Yeah? They poison them. They've done all kinds of things. As long as you don't show up, everybody loves you. But dare to show up, whoa, then you'll see in what world we live. But there's no option, is there? How can you continue now with that awareness, living your life on the lower rungs of the ladder of power? You know it's an inevitably journey into resignation. Everything what you do not convert ends up as a resignation. And you already got many things that were fully beautiful alive, buried in your dungeon. There are a lot of corpses down there that once were alive. So those resignations need to find completion and tomorrow we're gonna go into a, into a day where in the afternoon we're gonna deal with that so that you can reawaken the dead and dissolve those resignations and get that out of your way. Yes. What, what if the dead doesn't wanna be awakened? What if you- We deal with that tomorrow. All right, okay. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little power at the moment. See, if you are frustrated in your sexual relationship with your partner, have you given the other the list? <laughs> Or are you sitting on expectations, assumptions, complaints? They should know. Wake up. Either you spend the rest of your life on the lower rung being a victim, or you're gonna have the best sex in your whole life for the rest of your life. It's all about the list. Do you agree? In terms of um, giving your list out and expressing your wish or request, if the person you need the response from does not respond the way they should and you can't go any higher it's a business relationship or it's just you and them yeah okay how do you feel empowered yeah very good when they won't give you what you need yes. and they just won't do it absolutely and david that question should have come up at that stage of inquiry it always comes up and you now were the spokesperson of the whole for which that question was raised absolutely so what if You went there, didn't make a difference, you did that, and if there was an environment, you could have gone there. So usually request, so you put the request again the next day or two days later, and one more time again, and it's not gonna be passive, positively responded to, then what? Then you need to make a call whether you choose to have that being incomplete and as a condition or not. No half pregnant. The half pregnant would immediately get you somewhere there because you make a compromise and every compromise is foul. There's always something in you registering that you was forced to make a compromise and vengeance is part of the game. But don't make compromises. Create clarity. Know what you need and stand for it. Maybe you don't need it in a year from now, but now you need it. 
And don't try to psychologize yourself and all kind of things. If it's a need, it's a need. Then you take responsibility and honor that. You express the wish, you make a request, you repeat the request. You may even offer to empower the other in fulfilling the request. Now, if they say, I would like to do that and provide that for you, I just don't know how, and if it's not kind of a cop out, if you feel their sincerity, then you even could um, offer to empower them in learning how to do that. So there will be positive action, but if all that is not going to happen, well, you need to make a call. So either you incorporate that as this is part of what is, and you are making sure that you're not going to be down here, or you make a different choice, a different company, a different person to relate to, a different house, a different country, whatever. There's no shame in change as long as it's coming from creation, not reaction. Nowhere it's written that you have to put up with everything. Nowhere. Nowhere it's written that you need to stick with something that turns out not to work for you. So, it's all about, are you willing to take responsibility for what's true for you at the moment, and that might change over time, and take action on it. Ultimately, that's why I love this tool so much, if you put the ladder of power in totality onto your life, and let's say you're going to go through every area in your life and you convert everything what you find, and on the fly, immediately from reaction to creation, can you imagine what kind of person and quality of life that will become available to you? No more complaint, no more victim. You sleep like a baby. Headaches are something you don't even remember how it feels. Your energy is abundant. You radiate, you live again. Dead, alive. What does it take? Courage. You do the conversion action and that causes, it's like throwing a stone into a pond it creates an effect into the whole. You don't know what the response will be, but you are alive. So request, if he leaves you, because whatever reason there is, he can't be with a woman who stands for her needs, yeah, he wants a pet, yeah, if that's not you, and you start requesting and standing for what is real for you, and he leaves you, well, then give him your blessings. Let him go. Yeah, make space for somebody who fits your energy now, who is a better match of who you really are. You need to be willing to detach from holding on to stuff that turns out not to work once you are going up the ladder of power. Face the dilemma where the cost of making the call appeared bigger than the cost of resignation. According to your judgment? Fair. And that was the, the dilemma I was in. That is some powerful inquiry everybody has been in or will go into when we start becoming aware of this. Change always causes consequences. Inevitable. Our assumptions and fears are usually not confirmed by what happens, really. The 
assumptions and fears we have are usually not confirmed. On the contrary, when people allow change, if it's based on an awareness level, what we're talking about here, the whole starts applauding you showing up and aligning yourself with energy that is flowing and not stuck. So are you willing to risk a million dollars of worth a company that got you stuck? The question is, do you want to live? And the whole is not stingy. So do you risk that one million dollars lost, you free, huh? You have no idea how powerful the whole is. I can't give you a guarantee for that. You need to experience it, but read the biographies of people who have lost and who were not victims. They were given tenfold after the loss. That's why it's in, this, in the books that every millionaire got bankrupt once or twice as a statistic. Because there you get shaped accordingly so that you then can hold the space what it means to have a million or more. Yeah, so the willingness to risk it all opens the possibility to get it all. And I believe it's a fair deal. If you want to have it all, you got to risk it all. 